Hello everyone. Today's interesting topic for presentation is Down syndrome. Let's understand the details of the Down syndrome through watching through this video. Welcome to Logic Medico. We are understanding the concepts in medicine. If you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification of the videos. Consider subscribing. Share this video with your family and friends if it adds value. Come on to the Down syndrome. So in this Down syndrome, it is basically a genetic disorder caused by the presence of all part of the chromosome or a just a part of the chromosome which is that chromosome chromosome number 21 either as a whole or as a part so that is down syndrome is usually called as trisomy 21 so this down syndrome is often named after the most of the syndromes are often named after physicians including this syndrome called down syndrome therefore the yes mark is there over there, down syndrome so some people just call it as down syndrome who doesn't want to follow the authors so the down syndrome is named after john langdon down a british physician who first fully described the characteristic of this syndrome in 1866 so credit goes to this physician so it is named after him as down syndrome so normally this is a normal karyotype this is only this karyotype is given only for study purpose and not for any other commercial use okay so here this is the tallest chromosome and this is the shortest chromosome this one okay these two are sex chromosomes starting from the tallest chromosome is chromosome number one next two three four you can see five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen 1920 20, 20. you can see all are in pair okay actually when you do the karyotyping it won't be there like this in pair after arrangement of the chromosomes you will get it like this pair and they are identical okay the first 22 pair of chromosomes are called as autosomes or somatic chromosomes the last pair of chromosome is either xx it will be female the individual will be female or xy it will be the individual will be female male so this karyotype is a male karyotype okay so these last pair of chromosomes are called as allosomes or sex chromosome the first 22 pair of chromosomes are called as autosomes or somatic chromosomes they determine body characteristics whereas the last pair determine the male ex and female sexual characteristics either the external genitalia or the internal genitalia and the gonads that is the testis in male and the ovaries in female are determined by this if it is xx then the person will have ovary if it is xy and the person will have testis so that is about the normal karyotype normal karyotype can be for written like this 46 comma xy or 46 comma xx meaning there are 46 chromosomes in each and every cell out of which the last two are xy or xx that is the meaning of that it can also be written as 44a plus xy 44 a 44 means 22 into 2 is 44 44a for autosomes plus xy means additional we have six chromosome x and y it can also be 44a plus xx in case of female that is a normal karyotype in down syndrome what is the basic pathophysiology we will see that so there is a trisomy of 21 so let's understand what is trisomy 21 in this the karyotype is written here 47 comma xx plus 21 meaning each and every cell of the body contains 47 chromosomes out of which the last pair are xx plus there is an additional chromosome at 21st position so this is a female child because there is no x chromosome sorry there is no y chromosome if it is y chromosome is present then there will be male so trisomy 21 can affect either female or male because it is affecting the autosomes it is no way related to the sex chromosome absence of y chromosome makes the individual female presence of y chromosome makes the individual male so the basic pathophysiology in this is non disjunction that is failure of separation of 21st chromosome during meiosis 
This meiosis can happen in the egg or the ova in case of female or during spermatogenesis in male. It is in the parent I am talking. In the father during spermatogenesis, if there is non-disjunction, which is which can happen. In mother, it is more common in the ova, the non-disjunction of the 21st chromosome. That is failure of separation of 21st chromosome during meiosis. That results in extra 21 chromosome, 21st chromosome in the ova. So when the extra uh, 21st chromosome is present, when the sperm carrying normal normal 22 autosomes plus Y or X chromosome fertilizes the ova containing extra extra 21st chromosome, obviously there will be trisomy 21. So here you can understand this each pair, one is coming from mother while the other one is coming from father. Mother means maternal, father means paternal. Whereas here you can see all are paired. Okay. Again, this is only for study purpose. This slide is used. You can see here there were two 21st chromosome in the ova. More often than not, it will be there in the ova. Then this 21st chromosome is contributed by the paternal or from the father's side. So obviously, because of the non-distinction of the chromosome which has happened, it has resulted in trisomy at the 21st position. You can see this child is a male or female. If it was 2x, it could have been female child. Now it has contains 1x and 1y. So it is a male child with trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. That is a karyotype. So the basic pathophysiology is non-disjunction of chromosome during meiosis either in the ovary or in the sperm carrying an additional 21st chromosome in it. So in Down syndrome there are various symptoms. The most predominant symptom of the Down syndrome is mental impairment which is there in the child where the IQ is 70 or 60 or less than that. That is the most dreaded thing. So the speech language development will be most affected in the child. And it will usually need a special school. Stunted growth. The ultimate height attained by the child will not be that as the normal adult of the same age and same peer group or same class we can tell. So it will have a stunted growth. Umbilical hernia. Abnormal protrusion of a content of a cavity is called hernia. If it happens in the abdominal wall next to the umbilicus, we call it as umbilical hernia. This is because the muscle over here, umbilical area is weak. So when the muscle is weak, the abdomen is like a pot belly and the intestine or omentum, that is a fold of peritoneum, can herniate through that umbilical area. So usually the child has what? Umbilical hernia. The skin on the back of the neck is more folded and more thicker. Okay, so the nape of the neck or the back of the neck, the skin is more abundant and loose and it's more thicker over there and it's folded upon itself. The muzzle tone, just now I told you, most of the skeletal muscles, the tone, the power of the muzzle, the tone of the muzzle, the resistance of the muzzle is low because of the tone only, there is an umbilical hernia as well. Then soft palate. Soft palate is narrower because of this the food while swallowing can enter the nasopharynx and cause cough or sneezing or frequent irritation to the child. Also while speech, few palatal words which are tell fa, like they, they are not able to pronounce that properly so they require speech therapy. So because of the short soft palate or a narrow short palate. Other uh, features includes flat forehead especially the head is flat the skull or the forehead area most of the ligaments ligaments are the bundle of collagen fiber connecting one bone to another most of the ligaments are flexible they are not strong enough to bind two bones near a joint so they are more flexible the child has got large protruding tongue okay so the tongue is usually like outside the oral cavity or protruding outside affecting the tooth as well. Uh, abnormal outer ear, the external ear of the pinna is abnormally large and protruding out. Flattened nose, we can also call it a saddle nose. The nose, the dorsum of the nose usually is the most projecting part of any person's face but in this child there is a, having a flat nose or a depressed nasal bridge also called saddle nose. 
separation of first and second toes it's called sandal gap usually if you are wearing any sandal there is a gap or there is a structure to hold on to between your great toe that is the first big toe and the second toe and that gap is widened in this style it's called the saddle gap and also in the hand if you note there are two transverse creases for you for the down syndrome child the hand will have only one transverse crease similar to a ape or a simian s i m i a n it's called the simian crease in the palm of the hand only one transverse crease will be there it's called simian crease that is also unique then abnormal teeth i already told you because of large protruding tongue it will affect the uh, tongue will protruding out of the oral cavity obviously it will be protruding near the tooth area where the tooth has to develop so therefore abnormality in teeth so any child with dental anomaly if the some parents who are from villages to bring we should always look for down syndrome slanting eyes uh, usually the eye eyebrow and the eye orifice that is palpebral orifice will be um, straight line okay almost straight or medially it will be more towards the nasal bridge more inclined towards the nasal bridge in this style it will be more slanting eyes the eye orifice will be more slanted shortened hand the hand uh, i already told you about the hand the hand is really short so usually we have two transverse crease in the hand but this child will have only one transverse crease because the hand is short it's called the simian crease s i m i a n simian crease short neck because the neck is short obviously the skin fold in the neck is more therefore the skin gets folded upon itself on the back of the neck that also explain obstructive sleep apnea whenever we sleep the tongue usually tends to fall backwards but we have normal sized tongue but the, this child has got a really large tongue so when we when this child sleeps the tongue falls backwards closing the laryngeal inlet resulting in obstructive sleep apnea that is during the sleep there is an obstruction for the larynx to breathe so therefore the child has got apnea means difficulty in breathing so usually the child wakes up after one and a half hour to two hours after sleeping like a choking sensation it will be coughing and will be gasping for breath following this so that is also one of the clinical features of this then bent fifth finger tip usually in the hand the little finger is there na the little finger will have a bent tip other other clinical features include brush field spots in the iris iris is a pigmented area in the eye it will be brown color or black color depending on the rays it have an aperture called pupil in that we can in that iris we can see some spots which are called as brush field spots they are pigmentations which are different from the usual pigmentation single transverse palmar crease i have told you about this is called simian crease all are interrelated so it's coming again large protruding tongue child will usually have congenital heart disease that is uh, endocardial cushion defect usually in the lower most part of the heart but you can remember down syndrome in the down of the heart lower most part of the heart it's ventricular septal defect actually most uh, textbooks give it as endocardial cushion defects obviously it's there in endocardial strabismus or squint will be there the most 60% of the child can have strabismus or squint and rarely uh, like less than 20% child will also have undescended testicles that is testes usually will be there in the bottom of the scrotum but this child they have undescended testes that is is still present in the abdominal cavity it has not had descended down into the bottom of the scrotum the incidence of down syndrome this is important this is a percentage okay and this is the maternal age so it's almost like nil when the mother consumes between 20 to 29 years of the maternal age it's almost like nil uh, point 0.1 or less percentage point 0.1 means like one in 1 million chances but after 30 you can see there is a substantial increase in the risk especially after 30 so at almost like 38 years it's almost 0.5% risk okay after that 
becomes one of 40 years it becomes one percentage means one in hundred mothers at 40 years of age will have a down children child down syndrome child okay at the age of 45 the risk becomes almost 3.5 percent the 3.5 means approximately 4 we can take means 4 child out, out of every 100 child born to a mother who has aged 45 years of age will be having a down syndrome this is because of non disjunction of chromosome that is failure of separation of that 21st chromosome keeps on increasing with increasing maternal age Come to the prenatal test that is the test to diagnose down syndrome even before the child is born the diagnostic test of choice is called a chorionic villus sampling so what is this chorionic villi chorionic villi is a finger like projection of from the placenta so they are going to take it take the tissue from the placenta from the chorionic villi and use to analyze the fetal chromosome i told you initially the karyotype in the chromosome karyotype if it comes only one pair here with the 21st position then there is no down syndrome if there are three here then it is down syndrome child so usually it is done in first trimester when the mother is in first three months now it is usually done between 10th and 13th week of her pregnancy especially if she is elderly mother then they will advise she is above 30 35 and she wants to know whether she is carrying the down syndrome child or not so usually they will advise chorionicular sampling otherwise not routinely advised routinely they will do ultrasonography at that age uh, in the first trimester and if they note anything in the nuchal thickness or the neck fold thickness if it is high then it is a down syndrome child but better to consult obstetrician or a sonologist who can confirm it last but not the least gen genetic counseling which is done in down syndrome is a process of evaluating family history and medical records and ordering genetic tests evaluating the results of this investigation also helping the parents understand what is down syndrome and reach decision about what to do next so there can be either down syndrome will be there or it won't be there the counselor will counsel the parents whether they can carry that baby or not it's up to the parents only to take a call but down syndrome is one of the leading cause of mental impairment in the childhood it can be prevented by a maternal uh, age genetic test it can be diagnosed by this genetic test and uh, by marrying before 35 years of age and completing the family also it is advisable to prevent but really meet your counselor and the doctor to take a suitable advice now this is just for your knowledge purpose whatever i have done here in this video is only for your knowledge purpose not to implement anything with respect to this video this is only for gaining the knowledge with respect to down syndrome like and share this video with your family and friends don't forget to press the thumbs up button showing that you like this video Thank you for learning from Logic Medico and if you are new kindly subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell button to get the latest notification of the videos which I upload. Thank you once again for having time to learn from watching my videos.